Hey, my little glib glops! Are you excited for the final part four of the Exarchs? Good. Here we're going to go right into it. First, first I'm going to do like before. Since how do the Exodites deal with death is the question you must ask yourself. We know that the um, Craftwell Eldar, they have their Infinity Stones, Soul Stones, and Infinity Circuit. Dark Eldar, they just have no souls at all, is their solution, and become non-psychics, kind of Eldar pariahs, or untouchables, if you will. So what will the Exodites be doing? What's the middle ground here? Take a second to ask yourself. I'll give you a second or two, because I'm about to tell you when right now. Here we go. The Wraithbone core of each craft world acts as a repository and conductor of psychic power. It is also the ultimate refuge for the spirits of its people in death. Every Exodite world has its own equivalent to the Infinity Circuit, called the world spirit. This is an immense store of psychic energy where the minds of de dead Eldar are preserved forever. Forever. They're not supposed to come out of it. You see, the infinity circuits are a stopgap measure. You know, eventually they're supposed to be rescued someday. But the spirit stones of the world are a permanent solution for the Exodites, is what they're saying. Exodites, too, wear spirit stones. And when they die, they are taken beneath the earth into one of the great tribal burrows. They are laid to rest there. And their spirit stones are broken upon the altars of the world spirit. Each world spirit is a complex psychic energy grid that extends over the entire planet, stretching between the tribal burrows, stone circles, and standing stones to make them psychically interactive crystal, made from psychically interactive crystal. These places are what the spirit world and the material world use to interact. Links with the webway where the living can talk to the dead. Wow, okay, so this is, this is a planet-wide infinity circuit uh, connected by way ley lines of the planet essentially so ley lines of the planet yeah does that mean Terra might have been an exodite planet in the past it has ley lines it had standing stones it has web gates could we find that the real connection between Humans and Eldar is that it was once an Exodite planet. That's crazy talk, isn't it? So, what else can it do? Because it also connects to the webway. It also connects to the webway. And not only is just the uh, infinity circuit, it is also used to transverse to the webway and used as a link where you can talk to the spirits that are... Contained within the world spirit. I am assuming that's what it means because it said talk to the dead. Let's move on. Because their worlds are home to their departed spirits and shelter them from the predations of chaos, the Exodites will fight very fiercely to protect their planets. To abandon a world is akin to abandoning the souls of your ancestors to the warp. For without constant replenishment, the world spirits diminish slowly and become vulnerable. Whoa, 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 whoa. Listen to that. That sounds like an innocuous sentence, but it's not. Without constant replenishment, the world spirit diminishes. That's a big difference between that and an infinity circuit. What is replenishment? Well, you heard how it's replenished. 
You replenish it by smashing somebody's spirit stone on the altars in the borough. So what does that mean? People have to continuously die at a certain rate to maintain a spirit stone, which would explain why the Exodites are a violent, warlike uh, culture for the Eldar. Because they probably got a, a, a tithe, if you will, their form of a, an imperial tithe, that they've got to pay the world spirit so many Eldar souls in order to keep it healthy. And I bet that will differ from planet to planet. And there you go. You've got the makings of your own exodite world right then and there oh no our world is extra thirsty making us extra vicious and nasty fighters or maybe it's that thirsty and therefore you know you i don't know what that means just something to think let's see what it says now <clears throat> there you go to abandon all of their ancestors to the warp Without constant replenishment, the world spirits diminish slowly and become vulnerable. Just as the wraithbone core of a craft world can unwittingly harbor a demonic intelligence, so the standing stones can provide egress to demons from the warp should the psychic paths be left unguarded. Well, there's some ideas for you. First, it has just said that they are going, there are demonic, demonic, de possessed craft worlds out there. Just as a craft world can unwittingly harbor a demonic intelligence. Yeah, that sounds like a demonically possessed craft world, if you want to imagine what that's like. So they're saying you could actually have a demon world for uh the exodites well there you go you know what this means this is this is a gateway for gw to bring the crone worlds into the game what were the crone worlds the crone worlds were some of the worlds that were just on the edge of the eye of terror so they terror so they weren't sucked into it they might have survived i mean the ones that sucked in completely became demon worlds i'm assuming and just crazy but maybe the crone world survived, which were worlds were just demonically possessed, I guess. I don't know. They could work with it. They're given a world of spirit stone, and they've just said that it can harbor demonic intelligences, so you just you decide. Let's go on. Uh, so they have to guide, guard the psychic pathways so that they don't turn into uh, demonic invasions for a demonic army to pour from the burrows and the standing stones of the exodites world would be a realization of their worst nightmare but such things have happened in the distant past and remain an ever-present danger today bing so that already answers you it's already happened. Okay, that was part four. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time. Bye.